Humane is one of the most talked about AI tech companies today, and not in a seemingly good way. The startup was founded by two former Apple executives back in 2018 and has raised over $230 million to date. So much of the company, which has about 200 employees, is made up of former Apple employees. The criticism and controversy today all center around the fact that this company raised a ton of money while still in stealth mode without releasing a single product. Then, when it did unveil its product, a wearable AI pin, and released it to to the public and provided a subpar experience that failed to deliver on the promise of a personal AI device that would enhance human capabilities. It just can't compare to your average smartphone. On top of this, it has a hefty price tag of $699 for the pin coupled with a $24 monthly subscription fee. The company is based out of San Francisco, California and was founded by Imran Chaudhary, who was a design executive at Apple, and Bethany Bongiorno, who was also at Apple but as an engineering executive. Humane's AI AI pins hardware design has actually been praised by many as feeling really high quality similar to that of your typical Apple product. However, it continues to face negative reviews on the experience of actually using the product. How could this be? How could the overall sentiment for its product be bad? Humane's team is comprised of many former top Apple employees and employees from other big tech companies. It remained in stealth for a few years and raised over $230 million. It seemed like the company was built to succeed from the start, but it's not doing as well as it had hoped, at least for now. To understand this, let's take a step back and delve into Humane's founders, Imran and Bethany. Imran Chaudhary is a British American designer and had a long stint at Apple before he started Humane with his wife Bethany. Yes, the founders are actually husband and wife. He has worked on a number of hit products like the Mac, iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Apple Watch, AirPods, and even the HomePod. He's most famous for creating the user interface and interaction designs of the iPhone that still exists on the device today. As a young adult, Imran joined Apple as an intern in 1995 and quickly rose through the ranks to become the design director of Apple's Human Interfaces Group. He was part of the team that created a new touch-based interface, replacing buttons with gestures. It was this small team that made up the original iPhone design team and the original iPhone interface. He is credited as an inventor on several Apple patents, including the touchscreen and its interactions. Something pretty cool to know is that he helped create the grid of square app icons to organize the iPhone's functions, which is the iPhone's home screen as we know it today. So when and why did he decide to leave Apple? In 2016, Apple's core design team began to come apart. Johnny Ive, Apple's chief design officer, who spent more than a decade working under Steve Jobs, stepped down from day-to-day -day management duties. Imran had been contemplating leaving Apple and informed Johnny that he planned to depart in a few months once he collected his equity shares as part of his compensation. A month before Imran was due to resign, he sent out an email to his colleagues announcing his departure. In the email, he specifically wrote, when you do things from your soul, you feel a river moving in you. Sadly, rivers dry out, and when they do, you look for a new one was seen as referring to the state of affairs at Apple after the death of Steve Jobs and under the new leadership of CEO Tim Cook. He was fired after his remarks because it was interpreted as Apple was going downhill and that its best days were over. Imran's email had financial implications and Apple would not allow him to receive his shares. So Imran departed the company in 2017. He had already been contemplating what could eventually replace phones and screens. Bethany Bongiorno was a director of software engineering engineering at Apple for eight years, where she led all software project management for iOS and macOS and helped execute critical projects like the launch of the original iPad. It was while working on the original iPad that she met Imran and they would eventually start dating and get married. Prior to this, Bethany studied physics at New York University and Barnard College, part of Columbia University in New York. She worked on astrophysics research and was a data management and software development consultant at PwC. Imran and Bethany started their new venture in 2018, which at the time was shrouded in mystery for five years. They quietly poached many Apple employees and remained tight-lipped on what they were working on. The founders envision a future that is even more intelligent and even more personal than it is today. In the current world where technology is built and optimized for addiction, they believe in rethinking the role of technology that feels familiar, natural, and more importantly, human. They've committed to building technology not for today, but for tomorrow that's focused on improving the human experience born from good intentions. 50% of 
Main's team comes from Apple. Key people include Ken Kosienda, the creator of the iPhone's touchscreen keyboard, Gary Schultz, who is part of Apple's industrial design group since 2007, and Jeremy Werner, who oversaw engineering for iCloud, Apple Pay, and Home. Looking at Humane's LinkedIn page, its team is made up of top designers and engineers from other notable tech companies. Other people from Meta, Amazon, Apple, Google, and Tesla, with salaries averaging over 200,000 US dollars. All folks who want to work on the next big thing and who believe in the mission of building a life beyond screens and with the principle that we humans deserve more from technology. The company has raised $230 million in funding to date. Its investors include Sam Altman, who holds a 15% stake in the company, Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff, Microsoft, and venture arms of LG, Volvo, and Qualcomm. In 2023, Humane gave a sneak peek at a TED Talk about the product it's been working on since its founding. The AI pin was demoed at the talk, showcasing a screenless experience built using ambient computing hardware infused with AI. The wearable pin has an array of cameras and sensors that project visual interfaces onto hands, tabletops, or any surface. It's clipped onto your chest. It can take photos and send texts and, according to its founders, has a powerful virtual assistant as good as ChatGPT. This generated a lot of buzz and hype around the company. Humane gave another tease of its AI pin at the Paris Fashion Week where some models wore the pin, giving the product a fashionable look. These two public debuts for the company were interesting strategies to market its mysterious product and, for what it's worth, I believe did the job. They generated a lot of buzz in the media and got people interested in learning more. Humane opened up pre-orders at the end of 2023 and it started shipping in March. The big question is, has it lived up to the height? The short answer, no. History usually predicts the future. The company Theranos, founded by Elizabeth Holmes, was touted as a breakthrough healthcare technology company that claimed to have developed a revolutionary blood testing technology back in the 2000s. It raised over $700 million from venture capitalists and reached a valuation as high as $10 billion. We all know what happened with this company. Much of the breakthrough claims from Elizabeth Holmes were later found fraudulent, and the company was actually fabricating results to deceive both in investors and patients. The company shut down and Elizabeth is now in prison. Another company we were faced the issue of having a massive valuation with little revenue to justify it. Now it's on the verge of bankruptcy. I'm not saying Humane will face a similar demise of these companies. However, it does have identical characteristics. It's a company that only recently came out as stealth, has raised hundreds of millions of dollars before releasing a product, and has garnered a lot of media attention and hype. Its AI pin has received received a ton of criticism for lackluster user experience and poor battery life. The Verge wrote a review of the product saying that it just doesn't work. MKBHD published a video reviewing the product saying it's the worst product he's ever reviewed. Much of the issues center around the fact that everything you ask it to do, you can do it much easier on your phone without having to spend an extra $699 and $24 per month on it. This post from famous investor Mark Andreessen is a good summary of my perspective on Humane. Despite all the criticism, I believe the AI pin is a very bold attempt at reinventing personal computing. Most of the people hating on Humane and its founders are the same people who praise Apple and Steve Jobs. Let's not forget what Steve Jobs once said. Those who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. This is only V1 of Humane's plan. Although the AI pin has its issues at the moment, the company is just getting started. As founders, it's better to release your product and get feedback early on versus trying to perfect it. You get so much more valuable feedback from shipping when your product is out in the wild. One of the founders of LinkedIn, Reid Hoffman, once said, if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've launched too late. The Humane founders took this to heart, and I believe this was the right thing to do. It's now up to the founders, Imran and Bethany, to tune out the noise, rally their team, and continue to iterate on their product. Will Humane end up changing the world? Who knows? But it all starts with a V1, even if it is the worst product you've ever reviewed. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you found this insightful, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my next tech documentary. Catch you later.